This is the PKF Texas Entrepreneur's Playbook. I'm Russ Capper, this week's guest host, and I'm here at the Gulf Coast Regional Family Forum with David Robinson and Dan Basakis with Admiral Caplica Group. Welcome to the Playbook, Dan, oh, David. Thank you. Good to have you guys here. Yeah, absolutely. You Good bet. to be here. Thank you. Tell us about Admiral Capital Group. Well, Admiral Capital Group is a um, it's a financial firm where we uh, you know, kind of focus on private equity, uh, real estate, private equity, uh, and other opportunities. But real estate is kind of our core core strength. But we're a value add. Uh, we go out, we find office multifamily hotel opportunities around the country. Okay. We have a tremendous partner in USAA that allows us to have a large footprint. Uh, and we use that platform much like uh, I was a former basketball player and I used that platform to do community work. And we use this platform to do positive things in the communities where we invest. Such as? Well, when we bought a property actually here in Houston, we bought a Hilton Garden Inn. Okay. We formed a partnership with the University of Houston's Hilton College. Hilton Worldwide and the Houston Independent School District informed Admiral Hospitality Scholars, named after my friend the Admiral. <laughs> okay. And we bring in 25 lower income kids a year to learn about hospitality jobs. And we mentor them. We have a hospitality camp at the University of Houston. They stay in dorms. They tour, the, you know, went to an Astros game, brought their families, tour bowling alleys, country clubs, cruise ships. We teach them about jobs, help them get into college, and then Hilton and Admiral together will pay for the college. Wow, so it's a serious investment fund, Absolutely. but with this major philanthropy component to it. Right, and, and the LPs really, um, they're in it because we're gonna give them competitive returns. Okay. Our, our returns are gonna, we put them against the best in our sector, but but we also have this other component where as, as the founders uh, and partners, we, um, we look for great opportunities to make our communities better. And I mean, that's what I've been doing with basketball for a long time. Uh, education has been my focus. We started Carver Academy. Now we've grown to 5,500 students in San Antonio, and we're going to grow uh, really to over t 10 or 11,000 kids there and sending every single child to college. So our, our passion is to do great work, but also do great work in the community. Okay, that's fantastic. Okay, so we've mentioned basketball twice now already. <laughs> I'm sure our audience is going, wait, that, I mean, you had quite a career uh, with the San Antonio Spurs. I've been blessed, yes. Okay. Uh, you know, phenomenal organization, obviously, San Antonio Spurs. Uh, we, I came in in 89, 90 when we weren't very good. Yeah. Uh, but over the last 25 years, we've really become one of the best franchises in pro sports. Uh, and, and I'm really proud of that association, that affiliation. But I'm also proud of what that that organization has done in the community of San Antonio. Uh, and, and I've been a little bit of a part of that. Right. Uh, and, and so trying to carry that on to now my new business in, in finance. Really cool. Dan, did you play for the Spurs too? Uh, yeah, well, I, was, I was a fan, <laughs> and that's really what makes the team important. <laughs> that's <laughs> right, that's, a, that's one, of the, one of the important components. Right. Absolutely. We, we go back to the dream team in 1992. Oh, you do? <laughs> well, that's really cool. Well, this is such a cool investment uh, program that you guys operate in this focus on education, which you just uh, right. certainly enunciated very well there, uh, but that's a difficult uh, category to do successfully. I think there's been lots of money yeah. that's been poured into education yeah. over the years Education's unsuccessfully. Yeah, no, there's no question. You know, when you look at our public school systems, we pour yeah. a lot of money into them, but they haven't been the most efficient right. systems. And that's part of the reason charter schools have come along. And, and my charter school management organization, Idea Public Schools, it has, has been a really, a, a top performer in that uh -huh. area. What do you uh, attribute that to? Uh, well, I think great leadership, number one, but uh, really continue it just throughout the whole franchise from the families to the students to the teachers to the organization leaders. Um, there's just one uniform mentality, and, and I just believe that kind of culture yeah. um, and that kind of focus just brings us tremendous results. Over the last 12 years, we've, we've, every single child has been accepted to college. And, that's, and yeah. we're, we're dealing in, in areas where there's you know, large financial needs. Um, you know, our families in, in, the, in South Texas, in that case, you know, half of our families are non-English as a first language wow. uh, families, and, and, and still getting tremendous results out of those areas. Very impressive, and Dan, your background, you with Goldman Sachs, right? With Goldman Sachs and the real estate group. And then before that, I was at Duke Business School with David's best friend from the Naval Academy, which is oh, how we wow. came together. Wow. Yeah. Well, I was going to get to that. How did? Uh, so that was it. I mean, did it, did, did, it took a while for this thing to kind of mature yeah. into what it is today, didn't it? Does. It does. I mean, it, you know, things like this generally grow organically. I know people look at me and they're, you're in finance from <laughs> basketball? Right. That doesn't really. But there's a lot of steps along the way. Right. And, you know, USAA, our partner, um, 
is, uh, has really been a big part of my life. When I graduated from the Naval Academy, um, I was an insurance client, and then when I moved to San Antonio, the founder of USA became my mentor. Oh, wow. And so I, he, put, he put me on the board there at USA Federal Savings Banks. For so, so for many years, I got a chance to learn about the banking, but also about the company. And the yeah. company is about service and loyalty and yeah. respect. Yeah. And those are all oh, things yeah. that I, I hold very high uh, in value. And so when I went out to start our, our fund, they were a natural partner. They right. came alongside of us. The real estate company there at USA is phenomenal. They've, they've done a, a tremendous job. Oh, yeah. Uh, and and so they were a natural partner for us. Really cool. But I'm curious, Dan. I mean, you, did you always have this philanthropy vision in your future too, or was what? this kind of a change of uh, your direction? So from 2002 to 2007, I was helping David with his school, the, the Carver Academy. Right. He put me on the board, and the more I saw the impact David was having right. on those kids and those families, the more engaged and passionate I, I got. Wow. And so 2006, 2007. I started thinking about leaving Goldman to do something on my own. It's, and a lot of my free time I was spending with David helping build an endowment and strategic planning yeah. and funding more scholarships and also traveling to other schools with David to think about how do we scale this up and visiting schools in New York and DC and Dallas and other places. And uh, so I, I got to a point where I wanted to continue to build a profitable business, but I wanted to help David scale up that community impact. And he was working with one incredible school with 120 kids, but how do we take this up? And so we started talking about a private equity business. That wow. If we grow it into a successful business and take 10% of our profits, we'll be opening schools supporting kids around the country. Wow, impressive. So when you talk about effective education, I can't help but think of the challenges that I see, not, not business as usual challenges right. in education, but the digital world. And uh, I keep I go into schools and we've interviewed people in schools, some of these progressive schools and at the end of the day they always l tell me Russ it's not like it was when you went to school <laughs> when you had the true. world book encyclopedia and all this, this stuff and, and they have computers now yeah. and they you know they they do they can look up and learn anything yeah. on YouTube and, and in Google. some ways that's phenomenal yes or, it is you know, to, to have access I, I, I remember having to go to do papers to go to the library right. and get right. the get the encyclopedia out so as far as access to information that's tremendous but sometimes you tend to lean too much on the technology mm -hmm. and you think yeah. that that's going to be the key in education and yeah. it's not yeah. sometimes you just have to take a step back and do things the old-fashioned way and 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 there's so there's a balance there that you have to really find. Yeah, it does. I, I mean, I you know, I mean, do you guys talk about that in oh, board absolutely. meetings with the schools and stuff? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a big deal. I you know, I think you, you, the core values are never going away, okay. and so that's really where you start, right? You have to give a kid mission and focus and passion. Those are the key things because they can then they can go on and learn anything, and they can they can find their place, uh, which I think is. Sometimes a little bit hard in our system now, kids get lost because it's so hard to focus. Our, our system is general and it's hard to focus on what do you do well? What do you do well? What do you do right. well? So I think what IDEA Public Schools does well is, is gives those kids space to find where their talents are uh, and, and accelerate them. Uh, so I, I think that's a key. Cool. You've, got to, you've got to get them the passion and the motivation. I know for me, when I go out and I talk to kids all over the country, one of the challenges is, hey, why should I stay in school, man? I can right. sell drugs and make twice as much right. money as I would if I wasn't, you know, right. so why should I go to school? Right. So you have to show them, number one, why are you going to school? What's, what's the purpose here? And then light the path for them, show them that you can get there, right? You wanna be a doctor, I'll show you how to get there. You wanna be, uh, own a hotel or a restaurant, I'll show you how to get there, and then I'll open up the door uh, with a scholarship to get you there. So, so there's a lot of pieces, questions that you have to answer for a kid who doesn't see his way to being, you know, a lawyer or a doctor or a teacher or a restaurant owner. Okay, I sense a little bit of passion. Uh, yeah, a little, just a, <laughs> was uh, right a little bit. You know, for, I've been doing this, you know, for a while. So my mom, uh, my mom and dad got me into education at an early age yeah. and and, and, and it just became a passion. I wanted to That's learn great. more, learn more. So I've been involved with public school systems, uh, private schools, right. uh, charter schools. And so I, I've seen this, this thing come uh, full circle. Great. So uh, I'm curious, you mentioned those different, you know, charter and private and public. Do yeah. you have a preference? Do you think one works better than the other? Well, I mean, the public school system is obviously, you, you have the largest pool of kids. So right. that's the most important, right. uh, obviously. And I think the charter schools are there to help the public schools figure things out, right? Okay. How, do we, how do we do this more efficiently? How do we do this better? So the charter schools were started as a experimental school system to help, uh, help get those ideas okay. across. So I love the charter school system, and that's primarily where I've, I've worked. Uh, but 
uh, all of those play a key role. Private schools are, are important because a lot of families feel like faith is, a, is an important right. key. And I want faith as a part of my right. child's rearing because right. that's gonna give him proper perspective when he goes out into the world and he makes money, then he'll handle that money in, right. in a more intelligent way. So I, I think each, each group has their role and, um, and, and as long as there's good collaboration and discussion, they're all, it'll rise, uh, make them all rise. Okay, cool. So the Admiral Capital Group takes investors. Mm -hmm. and, and are they special investors? I mean, are they only people that have private equity funds to invest in this one? Or would you take individuals too? We, we have uh, investors including USAA, the okay. Texas Teachers Retirement System, okay. which is a million and a half teachers. Okay. We have university endowments, family offices, high net worth individuals. We also have a lot of professional athletes that well, have come to us. Well, that's where I was going. Oh, well, to see sorry that. to take it. <laughs> that's okay. Well, what we call friends and family friends and as family. well. Yeah, we have a lot cool. of friends and family. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, that's good because, I mean, you know, I, I think things have changed with professional athletes. One thing, they, they make a lot more money and hopefully they're That's getting true. smarter about keeping, I mean, for a while they had a bad reputation there for a while. Yeah, right? and a, a, a properly earned bad reputation. Right. I mean, you know, if you look at the numbers of retired athletes and the, the, the rate at which they're going bankrupt, right. it really is alarming. Yeah. Uh, and, and so for me, these are the guys that I know would be the first guys to go back into their communities and put money back into right. their communities. So. Um, so, you know, we've really taken it on as, as a responsibility to try to help some of these young guys think through, okay. you know, on a business side, what do you want to do with your money? But okay. also on a personal side, how are you going to impact the communities that have supported you and that have given you this opportunity? So that's one of our passions, and we're still at a at really a, an infant stage as far as that goes. Um, but, you know, we've dealt with a handful of athletes now. and just love the to see their eyes light up cool. and, and see them start thinking about strategically, how am I gonna change the city I live in? If I live in Dallas or I live in San Francisco, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people. I have a great platform. You know, you look at the NBA or the NFL right now, that is a phenomenal platform. Right. Anyone will open the door. You can go talk to uh, any leaders in that community you want to. Right. So with that type of power, how am I gonna be wise about you know, convening people and gathering resources and focusing attention towards the proper things. Wow, don't you think you might even be more influential though if you went back and start playing again? <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, uh, anyone that's got a contract out there, you know, I, I can try to get back in shape. Uh, no, I mean, you know, you that, look like you I, can play. I, I, I was so blessed. I had a great career. Yeah, and I, and how many so, years now have you been gone? Fourteen years 14? I played, and, and I've been out now since '03, so 03. about fourteen years wow. out. So yeah, it goes fast, doesn't yeah. it? So uh, so yeah, but so it's great. I've seen this landscape change so much yeah. from the time I got yeah. in. You weren't talking about generational wealth when right. I came to the right. NBA, but now right. you're talking about generational wealth. Yeah. Um, uh, and you know your your second or third contract could could be a real game changer, yeah. not just for your family but for your community. Yeah. So uh, so I, it, it's more important at this point more than ever for these guys to understand the position that they're in and really be able to take advantage of, of uh, what lies before them. There you go. Well, David, I really appreciate uh, that you shared you. your passion with us. And Dan, thank you so much for thank being here. Keep doing what you guys do. <laughs> all right. All right, and that wraps up my discussion with David Robinson and Daniel Basakis. And this has been another Thought Leader production brought to you by PKF Texas Entrepreneurs Playbook.